Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Meso Tarek and I are long running series, the Unported Playlist. We're gonna take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time, and we're jumping right in because this game doesn't have much of an intro this week. And this is Polynet Warriors. This is as far as I can tell, Konami's first 3D arcade game. I know of nothing before it, but every once in a while there's something super obscure and esoteric out there that even I don't know, and I don't want to, well, actually comment down below. This is a game that has not worked in MAME emulation for the longest time, that is now working at the recording of this video. And I've been waiting probably 10 years to experience this game. And honestly, I've been hunting for a PCB for a long time, but now that it works in MAME, one was offered to me and I actually passed on it because it is extremely expensive and I want to save that money for some more, even rarer things. And that's not to say this game is not fun. It is 100% fun and an absolute blast. The reason I passed on it is because to have more than a one player game, you need more than one board networked up. So this would always remain a one player game in my collection and I didn't really want that. And trust me, it is very, very rare that I say no to rare arcade PCBs, especially when they're from Konami. But like I said, this is just one of those situations where if you could play two player on the same board, I would 100% buy it, but you just can't. But I love the look of this game. This runs on the Polygonet hardware, and it has one other game on it, Polygonet Warriors. I enjoy this one much more than the other game, because this game is bright and colorful and cheery, and has some really fun character design, where the other game is basically like a military tank shooter. And while there is no definitive connection between this and Polystars on the 3DO M2 hardware, it certainly looks like there is. This could almost be an unofficial prequel, and that's another reason why I really gravitate towards it, because I love this really cheery, colorful artwork. Now this board came out right around the same time that Virtual Fighter from Sega came out on the Model 1 hardware, and while this definitely isn't up to the task of doing something like a Virtual Fighter, I love how this looks. It's blocky, it's colorful, it's cheery, and it seems like it's running at maybe 30 frames a second, it's really hard to tell. The hardware does struggle in spots, but you have to remember, this is the first time a company like Konami was ever even dealing with 3D. This is the early era for them, so it's definitely going to have that appearance to it. But I love all the stages and everything going on, all of these cactus here, or cacti I guess being the plural, with these happy faces on them. This is something that I've always just liked as far as an art style is concerned, and I think that's why this game looks so good for being so primitive. These bright, blocky polygons with no textures on them are going to age so much better than if they tried to go with a realistic look, because this is cartoonish and these bug-eyed monsters here are going to look good no matter what happens. Now you will see when you get to 30 seconds or under, all of the different obstructions in the arena are going to shrink down to nothing, then you just have a full open area. And this was made to be a four cabinet setup. There were four PCBs on four cabinets networked together, and you would play with your friends or random strangers side by side by side. And that's the one unfortunate thing about this board, is it's going to be a lot more fun if you have a second player with you. Now is this the type of something that could be done on Mr. FPGA with a core? 100% Mr. would have the power, but I just don't think you're going to find anybody who has the board and is willing to donate the chips to be decapped. Because like I said, this is not a board that you're going to find very often whatsoever. You're really going to have to hunt hard and look for it to find it. And that is what's so incredibly great about MAME emulation, because it allows you to have experiences like like this because this game as far as I can tell never got a North American release I've never seen a photo of a cabinet outside of Japan so this very well may never have come to the US and there may not be any cabinets for this in Japan as well but as I always ask you guys on these unported episodes because I've never seen a cabinet for this in real life if you know where there is one please let me know down below because I would just love to know that at least one four cabinet setup still exists somewhere out in the wild and this is not something that's completely extinct from the arcade floor because it's just a blast and it's just so much fun. I love all the different animations and everything that are going on. It's just a game that makes me happy when I play it. It's sugary sweet but I am into that sometimes. I do love bright colorful things and I love that when you actually win a round of four matches you get this really fun cutscene. Your robot jumps in then you just have a dude in front of Mount Fuji who is singing. I don't understand it. It's in Japanese and unfortunately the characters are so kind of cartoonish. I couldn't use any translation translation app to even understand what's being talked about whatsoever so on the offhand chance you speak Japanese 100% let me know what it says down below because I would love to know but this game as cute as it looks it sounds equally as cute so go ahead and listen to the soundtrack for like 45 50 seconds and I'll be right back but enjoy
I just love the soundtrack too. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this game whatsoever. It just makes me happy to play and I love all the charm of it. And I just love that Konami had to get their start in 3D like everybody else. And some of the earliest 3D stuff I just find super fun to play. I love the animation style. I love the character design. I love everything about this game. But I will say even on easy mode, if you're playing against the CPU, the later levels get incredibly hard. This was definitely a game that was balanced to allow you to play it with other human players and you could just choose what stage you wanted to compete on to have different arenas. If you're playing against the CPU on this game, it is going to take a lot of practice to be able to see the ending of all three grouping of stages. And unfortunately, group two and group three use levels from group one and group two. So you're not getting a full 12 different stages. You're getting eight with some overlap but that's fine it makes sense and i love that you have a colored character and your bullets are that color so you can trace what's going on and as the game gets further into the round you go from having one projectile to two so the game becomes harder because you have nothing to hide behind but it becomes easier because once you actually get a beat on your opponent and can shoot at them you're doing double the damage at the same time but you'll see here i'm going to take my first loss this is a challenging game and I do hope one day we can play this on something like Mr. FPGA. If I could find a board that was cheaper than the one offered to me, I might actually buy it and offer it up to somebody to make it because I want as many people as possible to play this game. But the fact is it runs perfectly on MAME and from a preservation standpoint alone, that is spectacular because this is not the type of game that you're ever going to come across in arcades. This is the early stuff and I love it. All of the colorful polygons, the lack of textures, the music and animation, even the voice sounds. Sure, they're scratchy because they are sampled and it's not the best hardware in the world to be sampling on. But the sum of this game's parts equals something great from a historical standpoint, from a preservation standpoint, and from a just pure fun standpoint. I get that this super colorful cartooniness is not going to be for absolutely everybody, but for me it hits all the right marks and I just absolutely love it. And now as I do this voiceover I'm thinking maybe I should have actually bought that PCB. Sometimes you regret buying the things you buy, sometimes you regret not buying the things that are offered to you, and sometimes you buy something and you fall in love with it. That's just how the collecting hobby goes in arcade stuff. You're never quite sure what's going to make you happy until you make the decision and even I can't decide but this is just an absolute great game and I may do Polygon at Commander leave me a comment down below if you want to see that trust me it's basically the same game just less colorful and less charming but even the level layouts are so much fun having these bridges to go underneath and over things to hide from it is just an absolute blast and it kind of reminds me of Tokyo Wars from Namco except much much earlier but it's not often I get to talk about one of the first 3D arcade games of all time from a certain company like Konami on the channel. And I am so happy that I can show you guys Polynet Warriors. I hope you're as happy watching it as I was playing it. Short of that, I will be back next week with more unported playlists. And I'll have videos throughout the week as well. And hopefully some more rare Konami arcade games start emulating in MAME in 2023. Because there's a lot of good stuff from Konami out there that I'm still not able to talk about. Short of that, if you ever see this game in the wild, 100% play it, because you're probably never going to see it again. And hey, if you have two PCBs for sale, not one, let me know, because at one, I wasn't a buyer, but if you had a pair of them, I may actually take you up on the offer, because I definitely want to shoot these little polygon dudes with friends. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.